Seven members of parliament have quit the UK Labour Party. They will now sit as independents after leaving, independents after leaving the opposition over issues including Brexit and anti-Semitism. Now, for more on this developing story, we're joined by Therese Raphael from Bloomberg Opinion and still with us, Eric Nielsen of Unicredit. Now, I think the seven Labour MPs, now independent MPs, are speaking in turn, Therese, to give us their reason for resigning. Is this disappointing uh, for, for you know, people in the Labour Party that were expecting 100 resignation? Was this just the first of resignations and we could see many more? Yeah, I mean, the, I think over the weekend we were hearing five. It's a couple more than that. It's not two dozen, which would have, I think, made a bigger impact. Um, I mean, it's indicative of a divided Labour Party. We've been hearing for a long time they're divided over Brexit, but they're divided over much more than Brexit. There is, especially within the Parliamentary Party, just a great deal of opposition to Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. That, however, is not reflected in the membership base, and I think that's where it'll be interesting to see how this plays out um, over time. But certainly it also aims to put pressure on him yeah. to go for a second referendum, right? Something that he's been really resisting. So on the Brexit front, it does create certain pressures on him. Um, so, Therese, does this actually split the Labour Party? Well, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, it's a split in the same way like a small twig splitting off a, a giant tree trunk is a split, whether it's a, um, a you know, it... it, it represents any fundamental change yeah. to the Labour Party, I think it's too early to tell. I mean, what would be interesting is if we saw uh, the central, centrist Tory MP splitting off and a new party forming, and I think we're a long way from that. So the seven MPs that have resigned have said they will be running as independents. They've not announced a new party. And as we know, with Britain's first-past-the-post electoral system, it's very hard for a new party to gain electoral traction. Even the UK Independence yeah. Party, with, what, less than 13 percent of the vote only had one MP in 2015. So uh, we're a long way from saying that there's a, a new force in British politics, yep. but it's it's a warning uh, shot across the bow for Jeremy Corbyn. And, and uh, Therese, we're just hearing from Jeremy Corbyn actually saying he's disappointed that certain MPs have left the party. Will that change his policy towards, towards uh, well, first of all, some of the anti-Semitic things that we've heard, but also towards Brexit? I think the anti-Semitism uh, problem is a huge one for him because he's just not been able to dispense with it. And, and and put it away, and it's one that uh, you know many uh, Labour MPs are very uncomfortable with. On the Brexit front, um, I think he's in a maybe a more secure position because he's put forth a policy. He's challenged Theresa May to uh, to agree to a customs union, and that's a very comfortable position for him. At the same time, official Labour policy is. Go for a second referendum if you can't get an election, and he's he's sidestepped that, and and you know that's something that the MPs that have resigned, and I think some that are still um, in in the party are going to push him harder on if if Theresa May doesn't agree with the demands that he's put forward.